For four weeks last year, Mr. Subio Ajin Roger, 30, stayed in a specially designed dormitory room unlike others around the island. The beds were rearranged to create different areas, such as for rest, for dressing and for cooking, in the room. Packboards were added between beds, for privacy and doubled up as vertical storage space. The rooms also had standing wardrobes, unlocked using a cut key, with motion sensor lights. Current dormitories typically only provide pull-out lockers underneath bunk beds. Mr. Arjun Roger and seven other workers were given disposable cameras to capture life in their temporary home, a prototype room created as part of Project Commune. This August, the project won a Singapore Good Design SG Mark Gold Award, which recognizes designs that impact businesses and communities in Singapore. They gave some facilities in our room like a study area and dining table, said Mr. Arjun Roger. My favorite thing is the study because I want to study something, but in the room, I cannot because others want to rest, he said, adding that he is taking a course on land surveying. The Dormitory Association of Singapore Limited DASL Commission Project Commune in 2021 is the dust settled from the COVID-19 pandemic. After migrant worker dormitories became virus hotspots during the pandemic, the government announced higher standards for new dormitories. In October this year, the Ministry of Manpower MOM said that existing dormitories would have to meet a set of interim standards by 2030 and the same standard as new dorms by 2040. We were truly caught unaware and whatever we had been doing, the temperature checking, when workers are unwell we isolate them, that was grossly insufficient, said DASL President Jonathan Chia. Our approach goes beyond addressing the physical infrastructure of dormitories, he said. We recognize the need to create a sense of community and ownership. DASL enlisted the help of strategic design company agency to research, conduct interviews and reimagine how a dormitory could be run. Agency staff visited about seven dormitories and spoke to workers and managers to find out what the situation was like on the ground. They then regrouped to figure out what to do with all the information they had gathered before holding a workshop with 40 stakeholders that included operators and managers from more than 10 dormitories. Together, they came up with ideas to address needs that had been identified. We tried to prioritize them based on, these are the ones that we think will have the most impact and is doable within this period. Say Miss Grossier Fay, an interaction designer at agency. It was a once-in-a-lifetime kind of project, added Miss Lishan So, agency's design research director. They had to find a balance between migrant workers' needs, dorm operators' bottom line and regulatory requirements. How do we balance the needs of these three so that everyone feels like they have a win? No one in this ecosystem should feel like they have to lose something so that the other gains something. Miss So said. After about a week of building, the eight residents moved into the prototype room. One need that was identified was the lack of space for residents to eat together. Said Miss Fei. There may be a space to cook, but workers often end up eating on the floor in their bedrooms. There's no spatial boundary between clean and not clean, somewhere to eat, somewhere to socialize versus somewhere to rest, somewhere to sleep, she added. The prototype in the Leo dormitory used different flooring to separate wet areas from dry areas. An agency also created a makeshift dining or hangout area by shifting the beds to one side of the room and placing benches and a carpet on the other side. Even this very small demarcation of boundaries helped to create a different routine. I think we actually altered the way they engage with the space and with each other, said Miss Fei.
in some of the photos taken by the workers on the disposable cameras, provided. There are these guys that we've never seen before. They're friends from other rooms, who came over to hang out, she added. The study area, that Mr. Arjun Roger mentioned, was also a sound-insulating call booth. A place where residents had privacy to call friends and family. He told DSL an agency that, in his regular dorm room, he had to leave the room to talk on the phone. Another small change that had a larger-than-expected impact was placing multiple clocks in the room to show the time in India, Bangladesh and Singapore. People really loved that. Someone told us that it felt like their family was in the room with them, said Miss Fay. He said, when I look at the time. I know that this is when my mum goes to work, my sister goes to school, my dad comes home, all that. As part of Project Commune, PPT Lodge 1B, a dormitory in Silta, also tested out a STEM tour to help new residents find their way around. They were given an onboarding map with the dormitory's most important facilities, shops and services. When they visited these places, they could stamp their map as proof of the visit. The completed map could then be exchanged for a reward. When giving feedback to DSL and agency, a dormitory manager said the stamp tour worked well and there were plans to replicate it in another dormitory. We are not going to stop using it, the manager said. Mr. Peter Overy, agency's managing director, said besides physical environmental changes, the project tried to create behavioral principles as well. That meant helping dorm operators and managers reframe the role that they play at work, which led to different strategies for engaging with residents. TRP has been doing things like events where they are regularly celebrating workers' birthdays. He said, Quotes that you get from feedback are, In 14 years, I've never had such a wonderful day and no one's actually taken the time to celebrate with me on my birthday, he said. Agency designers took note of how the residents used the room through interviews and unannounced drop-ins before speaking to them again at the end of four weeks. They put together a handbook that was distributed to DASL members after Project Commune was completed. DASL President Mr. Chia said some members were surprised that private space or having areas to spend time with their roommates meant so much to residents. It also came as a shock that residents wanted mattresses. Because operators traditionally do not receive complaints about mattresses and workers rarely by their own, he said. In the past, dorms were built to specifications defined by the government. He said. They will define the area, they will also define the kind of beds, the size of lockers, but Project Commune took this a step further to actually truly understand what migrant workers needed within their rooms, because clearly the Singapore living environment is very different from what they're familiar with. The handbook is intended as a guide rather than a set of rules to follow, DASL said, but some operators have followed simple operational recommendations and are trying to provide more private spaces for their residents. With the dorm transition coming up, dorms will have an opportunity to introduce new ideas and new initiatives. I think a lot of them have taken reference from this guide that we have provided. Mr. Chia said. Mr. Arjun Roger, who stayed in the prototype room, said his regular room now has floor tiles, a change from concrete flooring before. The operator has also added dustbins and cabinets in his room. Agency's Mr. Overy said he knows there is still a long way to go to make dormitories the best they can be, but pointed out that it is a challenge to coordinate hundreds of thousands of workers. This is one step in shaping that journey for Singapore to be somewhere where all of its residents have a home and all of its residents feel like it's home.